this is Darren with HNEN, and we're here at the Washington State Cannabis Summit in Seattle, Washington. Just had a great event with all the attendees and everyone, and we're sitting here with the one keynote speaker. You know him, you love him, Tommy Chong. Tommy, how's it going this evening? Excellent. A lot of fun. Awesome. And we had a great time seeing you speak at the Washington Cannabis Summit, and we saw that you were also doing some other stuff in the community here in Washington, going out and visiting the MJBA. How's your visit to Seattle been so far? Been very high. <laughs> very high. Awesome. And very uh, smoky. There we go. That's very smoky, uh, very high, and very productive. Well, it was very foggy here this morning, so I'm glad you get to sort of see that. Maybe you brought that with you. And then, no, uh, no, no, <laughs> no. That's, that fog has always been here. I hear that. So, you know, what? we're going to jump right into some questions. Why do you think it's important to legalize cannabis? Uh, because it's one of the last racist laws on the books. It's, it spawned a stop and frisk, and it spawned the uh, overcrowding of the prisons. And, uh, and since they found out how good it is medically for people with Alzheimer's and epilepsy and MS, it's, uh, well, it's overdue. It should have been legal a long time ago, but I'll take now as, uh, you know, it's happening. Absolutely. And, you know, I actually got the privilege of hearing your keynote speech this morning and you talking about how cannabis has affected your life over the years. And for our viewers that haven't heard that story, in just sort of a nutshell, can you tell us how cannabis has affected your life? Well, cannabis has made me very wealthy. Mm -hmm. Just talking about it, you know, making jokes about it, making movies about it. And it's also made me very healthy. Uh, I had uh, prostate cancer a couple of years ago and I treated it with cannabis and now I'm cancer free. And also in cannabis, is, like I said, is, is, it's going to save the world. And uh, it's already started. In fact, it could save a lot of uh, land uh, uh, slides here if, if they uh, would only plant uh, hemp to uh, shore up all those slide areas, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it, would, it would help uh, with the re reforestation of our, our planet, which we need very badly. Absolutely. And uh, so, you know, that plant's going to help in so many ways. And it ha is helping, and it's long overdue. And, you know, hearing some of the keynote speakers at the Washington Cannabis Summit uh, today, they're actually talking about the movement of legalization of cannabis is not just a United States thing or a state level. They're talking about it as a worldwide movement that's going on. Countries, um, you know, around the world are looking at this, and it's a more of a world issue now than it is just a state or federal issue. Uh, and so what are your thoughts on that? If you could tell the government you know, one thing, or the governments of the world, one thing, what would be that mission statement? That well, would I, I would tell the government to back off, you know, just leave us alone, you know, reschedule it from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2, and quit paying countries millions of dollars to make it illegal. See, that's why the laws across the world are so perverted, because of the United States and their DEA drug policy, paying people, uh, to make pot illegal. Like for instance, the king of Nepal used to put a stamp on the hashish that he sold, the royal hashish stamp. And that was sold and that was a, a, a commodity sold in, in Nepal and India for, for centuries. And then the United States come along and offered uh, the king 50 million dollars to make it illegal, and which he did immediately. And, and that's happened all over the world. And look what it's done, it, it, it's turned Indonesia, you can, you can actually die. People have had the death penalty because of their dealing uh, with, with marijuana, with, uh, with cannabis. And so uh, us legalizing it will eliminate that, that incentive to, to uh, have, have people literally kill other people for a plant that's been proven to be not only harmless but beneficial. So as countries legalize this, it's also going to fall on the responsibility of the parents to educate their children about this. What do you think that message should be in the parents transitioning that education awareness to their children? Actually, it's very simple. All you have to do is 
actually, I was going to say teach your children how to use a cell phone, but it's the other way around. Have your ch children teach you how to use a cell phone. Google cannabis and read and learn because that's what's changed the world. Every, the cell phone has changed the world. The cell phone gives you information instantly and, and that's what's happening and that's what should happen with, with the parents. The parents should find out for themselves the good and the bad about, about cannabis and they'll find there's more good than bad. Absolutely. And, and coming to an event like this today, which is almost a sold out show, the first of its kind ever in Washington, what would you like to see this kind of group accomplish over the next year, two years, five years as a whole? You know, or other groups like this? What's the message you would want to let these groups know to sort of have it? Yeah, well, we're. We're, we're sort of like a support group, <laughs> you know. We're like uh, uh, we're, we're all rehabbing from the the draconian drug lives that we've had to live through. I mean, myself, I've been to jail. There's been a lot of people that have been to jail over over this uh, beneficial plan. And so, when we gather, each time we gather, it's more of a celebration of, of our of our. Uh, advancement as as far as the, the laws and as far as the knowledge goes. And so these these gatherings will be will multiply and it'll be one of uh, celebration and, uh, and and rightly so. We're we're getting paid back our due. You know when the DEA came in and, and took my belongings and and smashed our bongs on the floor and put me in jail and charged me uh, $100,000 worth of uh, fines, even more, and it cost me millions of dollars. Well, what we've done, what we're doing now, we're recouping. And as we recoup, we're gonna, there's a break even point, and then there's a point where we're making money. And, and as we make money and as this industry grows, we grow together. And we grow together in a sober, kind, loving manner that will be an inspiration for the children. Our children will look at us like my children do, you know. They're all growing up. They looked at my life, they looked at how I lived my life, and they're copying me. And, and that's going to, we're going to have peace all over the world if we just keep going. And we are going to keep going the way we're going. Absolutely. All right, is there anywhere people can find out more information about you, what you talk about? Well, I got a couple of uh, websites. You know, I have the Cheech and Chong website. Okay. We'll hook you up with everybody. Awesome. TommyChong.com will uh, okay. hook you up. And uh, that's it. Do you Twitter at all? You got a hashtag well, Tommy Chong? Twitter, Twitter. Hashtag Tommy I tagged you today. What is my Twitter? Uh, Tommy Chong. Tommy Chong. Yeah. Hashtag Tommy Chong. Okay. All right. Thank yeah. you very much, Tommy, for coming on the all show. Right. Where's the bathroom? Just right around the corner. This okay. is Darren. Thank you. With H N E N for the Washington Cannabis Summit here in Seattle, Washington. We'll be right back.